Uh, basically, Privacy Shield gives you the exact same protection it gave you under Safe Harbor. There are a couple of add-ons that are not going to make any difference in practice. So your data is going to go to the NSA just it was like it was before. Um, your data is still subject to mass surveillance like it was before. Um, there's also not really, re really protection against US companies that hold that data because they can basically do anything under Privacy Shield if they have the right privacy policy. And thereby, I don't think that it really offers any kind of protection. And there is a very high likeliness that it's going to be overturned by the European Court of Justice if it gets back there. Um, we do have a global internet now, so we have data flowing around the whole world, but we still have national jurisdictions. And the fundamental clash we have here is that Europe has fundamental rights for any kind of human, while the US only pro provides that for its own citizens and has um, surveillance laws for everybody else, basically, without any such protection. So um, that is an always going to clash with each other. Um, unless this is solved, no real agreement is going to be able to make any difference. Um, so we really have to look at cases where um, U.S. mass surveillance laws apply. And in these cases, I don't think we, there's any way other than really changing U.S. law to a certain extent, giving foreigners some certain protections as well, and basically making that argument, if you want to be on the European market with your companies, then you've got to give us at least some basic fundamental um, protections that we need. And I think that's a fair kind of proposition to make also from a political standpoint. From a legal standpoint, these two things are just going to always clash, no matter what kind of agreement you put in between. Um, so I would generally claim that um, the, fundament like the, the fundamental rights we have in Europe allow a lot of the productive and good options that you have. Um, it just doesn't allow like the, the evil stuff you can do with big data. And obviously, I think everybody should use it for good purposes as well, um, for public broadcasting, just like for medicine, for, I don't know, organizing our transport in a more efficient way. Um, that's all stuff that we're interested in, and I don't think that there is a big problem. Um, on the other hand, there is a certain fear oftentimes to use this technology because of privacy, of I don't know what. Um, and that's a huge issue, that only kind of the commercial sector moves forward and the rest is basically sitting there and not really knowing what it wants to do. So I would absolutely encourage anybody to use any kind of new technology to serve the public purpose that, that um, public broadcasts are obviously serving anyways. Um, there are certain principles in the upcoming data protection regulation, but also in the existing data protection directive. Um, that you use data for certain purposes, that you have to have a legitimate aim, that you have to have some certain um, retention period, stuff like that. Um, so I think within that framework, you're very free to do different things. And that's more of a matter of your own kind of approach, your own vision of what you want to do within that framework. I think generally it's really important, especially in an age where we talk about um, filter bubbles, where we have polarization, where people are really um, thinking that certain stuff that they see on Facebook is a fact when it's an obvious lie, where a lot of the stuff that we thought is overcome, like basically um, politicians having their own newspaper like before, which is now their Facebook page which allows them to basically be not criticized, not ask or anything like that. We have a lot of issues right now in the digital age um, that is a fundamental problem to our democracy. Um, and we see that more and more, like in Austria, we have presidential elections of a Green and a conservative um, person, um, a right-wing person, and the voters don't even interact with each other anymore. It's like in the US with the, the polarization just as well. I think exactly in this overall environment that we have right now, a public broadcaster could be the platform where we kind of get together again, debate things, and serve democracy in general and also kind of information in other ways, not just democracy. Um, and I think if there are initiatives in that direction, it would be of, of incredible value to, to get back and kind of um, get really kind of this public debate again, the common interest in, 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 in facts also in information again.